Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Despite some very welcome rain this week, fire is something that many Oklahomans have been thinking about. So today, SUNUP's Dave Deacon takes a look at some ways to not only manage, but also put up some safeguards against fire. This time of year is usually a really good time to burn. This time of year, this year 2014, is not a good year. John Weir spends a lot of time with fire. He teaches the science and art of prescribed burns, removing invasive plants, improving wildlife habitat, and reducing natural fuel, which can lead to devastating wildfire. Today, he's doing what they call in the industry, mopping up, after a truck drug a loose chain sparking a wildfire in Payne County. Right now, the, the 10 hour, 100 hour, and 1000 hour fuels which are the larger diameter stuff, like a lot of the dead logs, limbs, and stuff that are laying around. They're extremely dry, very flammable. So what happens is when you burn an area that has a lot of those in it, most of them are catching on fire. And they are actually burning for several days. Uh, we actually just did a burn two weeks ago, and six days after the burn, we still had stuff inside the burn unit smoking and actually flaming. Weather conditions like we've had recently have made that possible. We consider the most important weather variable for fire behavior to be relative humidity. You can have very high relative humidity and the, the dead fuels will be very moist and won't be able to burn. So you could still have a 40, 50 mile an hour wind, but if the humidity is high, it's not gonna burn. So if relative humidity is the first factor, once the relative humidity is low enough to have fire danger, then wind speed becomes the second most important variable. And we generally say to be on the safe side, only do a prescribed burn when it's 15 miles an hour or less. There's a lot of times we'll have a good day to conduct a burn, but we won't burn. Because the next day the winds are supposed to be really strong and out of maybe a different direction that's not as safe. And so we wouldn't want to burn. It'd be a good day to burn, but tomorrow we know stuff's going to catch on fire and be smoldering. And if there's 40 mile an hour gusts predicted and it could you know, blow that way and, and escape, we're not going to do it. That's Again, that's part of that planning process of a prescribed burn. That's what, again, makes it different than a controlled burn. There is an important distinction between those two. Controlled burns are debris burns. That's if somebody burning a brush pile, burning trash and things like this. Prescribed burns are burns that are conducted on the land for a specific objective to manage that land for, whether it be to control cedar, improve wildlife or livestock habitat, you know, that's what it's for. To help develop plans for prescribed burns, the Oklahoma Mesonet created OK Fire. OK Fire is our weather-based uh, wildfire current assessment and future prediction system. It goes out 84 hours into the future. It's uh, based on our Mesonet weather network, a uh, tower of which you see behind me. We have 120 of these towers and measure things such as wind speeds and relative humidity and so forth. It gives us that real-time weather, pretty much real-time, so we know exactly what the weather's doing. We can look at it and see where fronts are at, where wind shift lines are occurring, you know, current conditions, what we'd expect, and then with all the other tools that we have, the prescription planner, uh, you know, the, the fire weather stuff, the forecast models that it offers us, great tool. All the burners that I know here in this state, you know, they all rely on it heavily. With this much information available and a well thought out burn plan, prescribed burns are rarely a threat to life or property. You have the numbers of neighbors, you have the phone numbers of the local fire departments and anybody else you need to call. But also what you want to do in those plans is you have a contingency for an escape fire. In, in stressful situations like that, if something was to escape on that, easy things become difficult and difficult things become impossible for most all people. And so you want to have thought that through long before it ever happens to you. So you know, what are we going to do if it does escape? And you know, we just did a survey looking at burn associations all over the Great Plains and of 1,094 burns that was conducted, there was only 16 fires out of those 1,094 that they required somebody else to help them put something out. That's one and a half percent of all the fires that were conducted. That's really good. That's a good, that's a good safety record to show that private landowners know what they're doing when it comes to fire and they can work really well together, especially the burn associations. Still, metal dragging on roadways will light wildfires from time to time. To learn what homeowners can do to protect their property, I spoke with Oklahoma Cooperative Extension's Terry Bidwell. <laughs> 